Hello everyone. Welcome to this video lecture of 19 SCPHY U301. We have been discussing the third chapter vector analysis and in the previous lecture we discussed these basic concepts of vector. Dot product of two vector is a scalar quantity and it is written like this a dot b which is equal to mod a mod b into cos theta. In the terms of components of a and b it can be written as ax bx plus ay by plus az bz. Cross product of two vectors is a vector quantity it is written like this a cross b where its magnitude is equal to mod a mod b into sin theta where theta is the angle between the two vectors. The direction of cross product is obtained by using right hand thumb rule and it can be calculated by using the components of a and b with this determinant i j k a x a y a z b x b y b z as the name suggests these two products now involve three vectors and scalar triple product is defined like this it is a dot b cross c now b cross c is a vector and then we are taking dot product of a vector with vector a and therefore naturally this is going to be a scalar quantity this can be calculated with the determinant a x a y a z b x b y b z and c x c y c z if a b and c form the edges of parallelopiped then the scalar triple product gives us the volume of that parallelopiped from this interpretation it should be clear that if a b and c all these three vectors are in a plane then the scalar triple product is going to be equal to zero vector triple product is defined as a cross b cross c now b cross c is a vector quantity and then you are taking cross product of a with the vector quantity and therefore this is a vector this can be calculated as follows it is a dot c which is a scalar into vector b minus a dot b into vector c in this lecture we want to discuss the concept of scalar field and vector field then we will see what it means to differentiate a vector with respect to a scalar and then we will define a vector operator called as del operator it is written like this or nabla operator and this vector operator now can be operated onto scalar field vector field and since it is vector both these types of operations are possible for del operator when we take dot product of that operator with a vector then we get a scalar quantity which is called as divergence of the vector whereas if we take cross product or if we calculate cross product of del with the vector field then we get a vector field which is called as the curl of the vector field and finally we will see another operator which is derived from this del operator which is second order differential vector operator let's begin by considering the scalar field first for our discussion a field is simply a function of space so it is function of x y and z so whenever we have a function of x y z then that is the scalar field for us as far as that function is a scalar quantity so in other words we can say that if we are associating one number at any point in the space then that becomes the scalar field there can be numerous examples for that well it could be temperature inside a closed container if the temperature is constant throughout that container then it will become a constant field it is not changing however if that container is heating 
then the temperature may not be constant and that in that case this will give us a variable scalar field similarly electric potential is another example of scalar field since it is a potential it is a scalar quantity and therefore in the space we associate only one value for each point in the space and therefore it is again a, an example of scalar field and I am sure that you can think of numerous example for scalar field now let's consider a vector field this is a vector a vector field can be written like this it is a vector that means it has three components x component y component and z component and each component of this vector depends on x y z so each of this component is function of space and therefore there are three numbers associated with this vector field at any given point in space So basically vector field is extension of scalar field in case of scalar field there is only one number associated at every point in space whereas for vector field for every point in space there are three numbers associated each of this number as a function of x y z is a scalar quantity so all these v x v y and v z are scalar multiplication with these unit vectors i j and k makes those scalars vx, vy and vz respectively vector quantities. One example of vector field can be electric or magnetic field in space. Similarly, if we consider a room, then in that room there are so many gas molecules and each of these ga gas molecules are in motion, they are moving in all the possible directions and therefore we can define a vector field for velocity of gas molecules or air molecules in that room and when we do it, we have to represent x component y component and z component of the velocities as at every point in space and therefore it is clearly a vector field vz for our discussion which is generally true for all the applications in physics there is this constraint on what kind of functions the fields can be they are generally well behaved functions so if it is a scalar field there is only one function associated with that and that function is well behaved function similarly if it is a vector field there are three functions associated with that field now and those functions are also well behaved functions now well behaved is an umbrella term in our context well behaved means that we should be able to calculate value of the function at any point given the value of the function at neighboring points so how we can do it is by using the partial differentiation suppose we know the function at a neighboring point x minus delta x y minus delta y and z minus delta z then we can calculate total differential for this function at the given point x minus delta x y minus delta y and z minus delta z sorry this is this has to be dx dy dz and this also is dx dy dz we are considering the total differential it is infinitesimally small change and this is equal to partial differential of the function with respect to x into dx plus partial differentiation of f with respect to y into dy plus partial differentiation of function with respect to z into z dz and once we have this total differential 
we can calculate the function at required point x y z by considering this addition of function at x minus dx y minus dy and z minus dz plus df so in this way we can calculate a function at a given point by using the value of the function at neighboring point and when i say our function is well behaved this is what i mean we should be able to calculate the value of the function at any given point by using the function at one of the neighboring points and now it should be clear that since it involves these partial differentiations if a function has to be well behaved in our context its partial derivative should be exist at every point and that should also be continuous so as far as the function is finite and if it is continuous we can calculate the partial differentiations and which is also true for any higher order partial differentiations and in our context therefore when we have field these fields are continuous and they are finite at every point of the domain that we are uh, considering let's now move on to the next topic of this video what it means to differentiating a vector with respect to a scalar suppose we have this vector quantity a and let me write it in its component form so it is a x i plus a y j plus a z k and we are now differentiating this vector with respect to some scalar let's say that scalar is x the x coordinate and it can be written as do x by do x because a is function of all the three coordinates x y z i have to use partial differentiation which is equal to do a x by do x into i plus do a y by do y into j plus do a z by do z into k it is given that all these three components a x a y and a z they are all functions of x y z and therefore when we differentiate a vector with respect to a scalar quantity this is what it means we differentiate each of the function associated with that vector field with respect to given scalar here i have assumed the scalar to be x it could be some other scalar on which the function depends along with the space suppose for example we have e as the electrodynamic field so it will depend on space and it will also depend on time and i may want to find this partial differentiation do e by do t which is going to be do e x by do t i plus do e y by do t j plus do t do e z by do t into k so this is what it means to differentiating a vector with respect to a given scalar quantity now we have arrived at the most important point of discussion for this video the del operator because rest of the chapter is going to be based on this operator this del operator is denoted by this nabla symbol and since it is a vector i have drawn an arrow above that which is equal to remember generally it is this nabla operator and not the delta operator now this del operator is defined in the following way it is do by do x into i plus do by do y into j plus do by do z into k remember that del is an differential operator and these are the three components of that differential operator which in themselves are differential operators first one is partial differentiation with respect to x partial differentiation with respect to y and partial differentiation with respect to z these differential operators themselves 
have no value at any given point in space but they have meaning what it means is that when they are operated on some scalar or on some vector we have to differentiate that scalar or the vector with, with respect to x, y and z as suggested by that del operator. For example, I can operate this del operator on a scalar field phi and since it is a field, it is function of space x, y, z which now is going to be like this. It is to be calculated like this. The del operator is dou by dou x i plus dou by dou y j plus dou by dou z k and we are operating this onto the scalar field phi. I repeat again this itself has no value at any given point but when it is operated onto a quantity onto a field then we can associate some value to it. This operation will give us following quantity it is dou phi by dou x into i plus dou phi by dou y into j plus dou phi by dou z into k. So it is given that this phi is function of space at least x, y and z. There could be some other variables on which phi depends but since it is field it definitely is function of x, y and z. Now this is how operation of del onto some scalar field is defined. Similarly, we can have operation of this del operator onto a vector field and it is defined as follows. We have this del operator dou by dou x into i plus dou by dou y into j plus dou by dou z into k and we are operating this del operator on the vector field where vector field is basically these three functions sorry x y z into i plus x y z into j plus the z component of that vector field which is a function of the three variables and it is multiplied by vector k and this operation of del operator onto the vector then will give us this quantity. I will write it here. So del dot v is equal to, now you can see that this is a vector, del operator is a vector and this is also a vector and what we are doing is we are taking a dot product between them and therefore this operation is very similar to taking dot product of two vectors. So we have to operate this x component only on the x component of that vector field. Similarly, we operate the y component only on the y component of the field and we operate the z component of the del operator only on the z component of the field and therefore what we get when we operate del on the vector is this. It is dou vx by dou x plus dou vy by dou y plus dou vz dou z. Now note here that when we operate this del operator onto a scalar field it is like multiplication of a vector with a scalar and therefore what we get is a vector field and similarly when we operate this del operator onto a vector field like this it becomes a dot product and therefore what we get is a scalar field and remember this is a vector field. Let's now consider the operation of this del operator in more detail. Suppose I have a scalar field phi and I am operating this del operator onto the scalar field which is equal to dou phi by dou x into i plus dou phi by dou y into j plus dou phi by dou z into k. This is a vector field because phi is a function of x, y and z and when we calculate these partial differentials we will get three functions of 
x, y and z which are multiplied by the unit vectors i, j and k and therefore this will give us a vector field. That vector key field is called as gradient of that scalar. Let's consider an example. Suppose I have phi as x square y plus y cube z. Now clearly this phi is a scalar field. It depends on x, y and z in general and it is a scalar quantity and we want to calculate gradient of this scalar field which means we are operating this del operator onto the scalar field phi which is equal to dou by dou x phi is x square y plus y cube z into i plus partial differentiation with respect to y of y which is x square y plus y cube z into j plus partial differentiation with respect to z of this x square y plus y cube z into k. So del of phi or this gradient is equal to 2x y into i plus x square plus 3y square z into j plus y cube into k. Clearly this del phi which is gradient of the scalar field phi is a vector field where these three are the x, y and z component of that vector field. So let me write it like this. This is x component of this operation. This is y component of the operation and this is the z component of that operation. Now given any point x, y, z you can calculate gradient of the scalar field phi at the point. All you need to do is plug in values of x, y and z in this relation. Let's now consider another operation between this del and a vector field v. Suppose the vector field v is vx which is a function of x, y, z plus vy plus vz. Now since del is a vector operator and we are operating this del onto v that means there are now two kinds of multiplication possible. The first one is if I take the dot product between the two vectors and the second possibility is that I take the cross product between the two vectors. On this slide, we will consider the first possibility where we are taking the dot product between del and this vector field v. Now, del, remember, is this operator dou by dou x into i plus dou by dou y into j plus dou by dou z into k. And we are taking dot product of this del operator with vector field v. So it is vx i plus vyj plus vzk. The dependence of these three components vx, vy and vz on x, y and z is given. It is assumed. So therefore, since it is dot product now, we have to consider this multiplication if it, they were vector. Now since del is an operator, we have to consider the operation. This operation with y component of del operator and y component of vector field v and we have to consider the z component of the del operator operated onto the z component of vector field therefore del dot v is equal to dou v x by dou x this is operator dou by dou x operated onto x component and then we have this dot product i dot i which is equal to 1 plus the next term will be dou v y 
by do y and j dot j is also equal to 1 and finally we have do v z by do z so you can see that since v x v y and v z are three scalar fields associated with the vector field v this first partial differential is a scalar quantity this is also a scalar quantity and this is also a scalar quantity which are added together and therefore this operation is now a scalar and it is called as divergence of the vector field so divergence of a vector field is always a scalar field let's consider one example suppose i have vx as x square y z into i plus x y square z into j plus x y into z square k and i am calculating divergence of this vector field v this is a vector field where for this vector field this is the x component this is y component and this is z component of that vector field and when i calculate divergence of this vector field what i have is this partial differentiation partial differentiation of x component of the field with respect to x plus partial differentiation with respect to y of y component plus partial differentiation with respect to z of z component which is equal to let me write it here so del dot v is going to be equal to 2 x y z plus 2 x y z plus 2 x y z and this is equal to 6 x y z now you can see that this divergence of the given vector field is a scalar field and this is true in general no matter what is the vector field given divergence of that vector field is always a scalar field now given a point x y and z you can plug in the values in the relation that we have obtained here and calculate divergence of the vector field at that point let's now consider the last operation the third operation of del onto a vector but this time we will consider the vector product between that del operator and v operator this is equal to del operator is remember it is 2 by 2 x i plus 2 by 2 y j plus 2 by 2 z into k and we are taking cross product of this vector operator with v with vector v so this is vx i won't write the dependence explicitly it is given that vx depends on xyz similarly vy depends on xyz and vz also depends on xyz and this can be calculated by using the determinant just like we consider the cross product between two vectors this is equal to i j k this is the x component of the first vector which is the del operator which now in this case is an operator y component of the operator and z component of it of the operator and here we have vx vy and vz which is equal to i into we have to consider this operation first that is 2 vz by 2 y minus 2 vy by 2 z this is unit vector minus j now we have to consider this operation and this operation therefore this is 2 vz by do x minus do v x by do z plus in the end we have to consider this operation which is do v x by do y plus do v y 
by dou x. So this is how you can calculate del cross v which is called as curl of that vector field. Now it should be clear from this right hand side that this is a vector field because these are the terms which are scalar terms and they are multiplied by i, j and k the unit vectors and therefore curl of any vector field is another vector field. It is very important to keep in mind that the order of this del when you perform any of these operations is very important because this is called as gradient of the scalar field and it's a scalar quantity. Whereas if I change the order, if I write it as phi into del, this is no longer a scalar quantity now, it is another operator which is equal to phi into dou by dou x i plus phi into dou by dou y j plus phi into dou by dou z k and therefore order is very important. This is an operator remember, this is another operator. Similarly, if we write del dot v which gives us a scalar quantity, a scalar function, if we reverse the order v dot del this now becomes another operator which can be calculated like this. It is vxi vyj plus vzk. This is the vector v and then we are taking dot product of that vector with del operator and therefore what we should get is this v dot del. Therefore this is what it is vx into do by do x plus vy into do by do y plus vz into do by do z. This now is not a vector quantity, it is another operator. This is del and this is v. But you can see that since we are considering dot product between, between a vector and the del operator which is also a vector operator, we get a scalar quantity. Though it is an operator, it is a scalar operator now. And therefore, order of this del when you consider these operations is very important. In one case, it can give you a scalar quantity whereas in other case, it can give you another operator. It could be scalar or vector operator. Here, when we considered all these three cases, we considered gradient of scalar divergence of a vector and curl of a vector. In all these three cases, we only saw how we can calculate these quantities, how we can calculate gradient divergence and curl, but we have not actually seen the physical significance of that. We will do that in the coming lectures. In fact, we are our focus in rest of this chapter is going to be the physical significance of these quantities. Let's now consider the last operator, Laplacian operator. We already have written the del operator as follows. It is 2 by dou x i plus 2 by dou y j plus 2 by dou z k. This del is a vector operator and suppose I take dot product of the del operator with itself. This is defined as 2 by dou x into dou by dou x because these are now vectors and we are taking dot product, we have to consider a quantity which is similar to multiplication of x component added to multiplication of y component. In this case, it is the operation plus the z component of the operator and therefore this del dot del which can be written as del square now and since we, are take, we have taken dot product, it is a scalar quantity. I won't draw this arrow over that, which is equal to dou 2 by dou x2 plus dou 2 by dou y2 plus dou 2 by 
to z2 so we get another operator which is now a scalar operator and it is second order differentiation second order partial differentiation this is called as the laplacian operator if you operate this del square onto a scalar field since del square and phi both are now scalars is dou 2 phi by dou x2 plus dou 2 phi by dou y2 plus dou 2 phi by dou z2 and this is a scalar quantity whereas if you operate this del square onto some vector what you will get is dou 2 by dou x2 of the whole vector which is vx i plus vy j plus vz k remember vx vy and vz are x y and z component of that vector field and they are function of x y z in general plus double differentiation of that vector field with respect to y so it is vx i plus vy j plus vz k and the third component third term in this operation will be dou by dou z2 of the vector field vx i plus vy j plus vz k so this is basically the Lap laplacian operator in physics generally we don't come across operation of laplacian operator onto a vector but but these terms come very often various fields in physics we have come at the end of this lecture we discuss these topics we first consider concept of field a scalar field is a function of x y and z whereas a vector field has three functions of x y z involved in it x component of that field y component of that field and z component of that field then when we say that we are differentiating a vector with respect to a scalar say t this is equal to dou v x by dou t into i plus dou v y into dou t j plus dou v z by dou t then we define the del operator the differential operator dou xi plus dou yj plus dou by dou z k and then we considered operation of that operator onto scalar field which is called as gradient of that scalar field which is a vector field which gives this operation gives a vector field then when you consider the dot product operation of del with a vector like this del dot v then it is called as divergence of that vector field and this gives us a scalar field as the output of the operation and finally we consider the curl which means we are taking cross product between that del operator and the vector this operation has the output which gives us a vector field again Laplacian operator is basically dot product of del with itself and therefore it is dou 2 by dou x2 plus dou 2 by dou y2 plus dou 2 by dou z2. So Laplacian operator is a scalar operator and it is second order differentiation operator. In rest of the chapter we will focus on physical interpretation of these three operations gradient of a scalar field, divergence of a vector field and curl of a vector field. In the immediate next lecture, we will start discussing the physical interpretation of gradient of scalar field. Thank you for watching this video.